Hello everyone and welcome to The Big Hit. I'm Nathan Osler and I'm here with Danny and Michael. We're here to do what we all love to do and talk some sports. So what do you, let's get into it. start with the Super Bowl recap. So last time we were with you guys, we went through our predictions and now we have a winner, the LA Rams. What do you guys think? You know, I thought it was a great Super Bowl. Uh, one of the better ones I've seen in the last couple of years, you know, certainly after seeing what the Rams did last Super mm -hmm. Bowl, better performance what they did. Cooper Cup, great game. Aaron Donald, outstanding game defensively. You know, Cooper Cup absolutely embarrassed Eli Apple. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to see that. Yeah, I would say if it wasn't for that Cincinnati offensive line, Joe Burrow would have lifted that Vince Lombardi trophy because that defensive line, and particularly Aaron Donald, was getting after him second by second, play by play, and they just mm -hmm. couldn't get away from him. And if it wasn't for that, I believe Burrow would have went down on the last drive to win the game. Yeah, definitely. And like what you just said, Danny, the last time the Rams were in the Super Bowl, they lost 13-3 to to the New England Patriots. That might have been the worst Super Bowl of all time, in yeah. my opinion. This one was up there, though, for a really good defensive game besides the Eli Apple stuff and Jalen Ramsey was not really playing the best this last game. But looking at this, like the offensive line of the Bengals, like you were saying, it was kind of a disaster towards the end. And if Joe Burrow had more time, he had a wide open Jamar Chase because there was pictures all over the internet saying Jamar Chase was wide open for that game winning touchdown. You well, see in that picture, what they didn't show is the second Ramsey fell, the ball was already up mm -hmm. in the air. So, I mean, you can say that yeah. he was wide open, but I don't think he was completing that. Yeah. Well, I would say Cooper Cup was a well-deserving MVP of the game, but I believe it should have went to Aaron Donald just based mm -hmm. on that play he made, that critical last play to win the game, and even before that, too, he was making critical play after play after play, and he just kept coming after them and coming after them. He's ageless, basically. I mean, double-teamed, he still pressures mm -hmm. the other team, and they just can't do anything about it to stop him. So... And he said he might retire after this game, too. So yeah. that would be a way to walk off. Yeah, definitely. And there was a lot of wide receiver questions this game. Like, who were the Bengals going to be their number one target? They have T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, and Tyler Boyd. And in that game, Tyler Boyd has, like, his first drop of the entire season, which was a really crucial one on, like, I think it was a third down conversion. That would have been huge because that would have brought him across half field. But they went to T. Higgins majority of the game, and he was the guy for the Bengals. And... I think the Rams were just shocked Jamar Chase wasn't really fed the ball as much. But on the Rams side of the ball, Cooper Cup was a beast. But then you had the Odell Beckham Jr. situation, and that could have been a turning point to maybe say the Bengals could have took advantage of that, but they didn't, and they ended up losing 23-20. Well, the turning point at one time ended up being that the Rams missed that extra point, and it yeah. was 13-3, and then Cincinnati, like they always do, even Burrow said we're a second-half team, so here they come again, down 13-3, to touchdown, 13-10 to at halftime. And then all of a sudden, you know, they come right out of halftime, they lead 20-13 to just in a few seconds. Mm -hmm. So it was a flip of the switch just like that, but the Rams stayed in the game, and mainly because of Cooper Cup. If it wasn't for Cooper Cup, they had no chance because Beckham was out, he had Robert Woods already out, yeah. so you had these key players out. So if it wasn't for Cup on that final drive, they wouldn't have took the lead. But also, if it wasn't for Aaron Donald, I think Cincinnati would have won the game. Mm -hmm, definitely. And you got to give credit to the two quarterbacks. Honestly, Joe Burrow looked amazing still, despite the loss. And Matthew Stafford, you had the first Super Bowl champion to win at home, Tampa Bay, last year. It's the second year in a row this has happened in NFL history, and it's the first time also back-to-back -back Super Bowls take place in a home stadium and that home team wins with the L.A. Rams this time around. Next year, it's Arizona, I think, off the top of my head. 
Does Arizona have a chance to do it like the past two in the NFC gets another ring in a row? Not with Kyler Murray throwing a yeah. fit, he doesn't. <laughs> I mean, even if he comes back, the morale of the team is just going to go dip. It's going to go way down because Murray, mm -hmm. for some reason, had to throw his rage at the Arizona Cardinals when really he was part of it too. He was part of the problem, not doing well enough for his team against mm -hmm. the Rams. So to go out and blame your whole team for it instead of just yourself is ridiculous. And I believe the team's morale next year, whether they have them or not, will be down, and they won't be as good, mm -hmm. I believe. I think the Cardinals are a phenomenal team. I don't understand how they don't win and yeah. how they have not done anything you know, these past few years. You, know, you have Kyler Murray. You have DeAndre Hopkins. You have James Conner, who's, who's been phenomenal as a touchdown machine this year. Zach Ertz, the new tight end they got, mm -hmm. and they have a great defense in J.J. Watt. Yeah. They have Simmons back there. I mean, there's really no excuse why they should not be winning these games. Chandler Jones, too. Yeah, Chandler mm -hmm. Jones. It's crazy to think the Cardinals, they kind of remind me of last year's Steelers. A crazy, really good start, and then just an epic collapse and then a first-round exit. And it's crazy, like the Cardinals almost could have missed the playoffs. As you saw, the Saints were in the hunt for that iffy 500 record, sub 500, or over it at like 9 and 8. And then the Eagles were also a 9 and 8 team, but like the Cardinals almost missed out because they kind of just collapsed just like the Steelers did last season. But both of those teams make the playoffs, of course, and both are first round exits again. So before the Super Bowl, we got our NFL awards handed out. We saw TJ Watt finally wins the depoy. He finally beats Aaron Donald for it. The Steelers win an award. MVP, Aaron Rodgers, back to back years. Offensive Player of the Year, and in my opinion, might have been a for sure MVP candidate possibly to win it, Cooper Cup. So do you think Cooper Cup should have got more than one MVP vote? I think he should have been the MVP, and here's why. He carried his team when Robert Woods went down and Odell Beckham Jr. eventually went down to Super Bowl. But he was a triple crown winner of wide receivers in the NFL. Most receptions, most yards, and most touchdowns. And that's a very hard thing to accomplish. And going from Jared Goff to Matthew Stafford in just one year and having him be a beast out there is something that should be looked at as an MVP candidate. Just because a quarterback is up there, that doesn't mean he's an MVP. It's not a quarterback mm -hmm. award, it's the most valuable player. And my, in my eyes, it's Cooper Cup. And Aaron Rodgers crumbled against San Francisco. And, of course, Brady didn't make it there, but he had a tremendous comeback against the Rams. But who caught that deep ball from Stafford at, down to Tampa Bay? Yep. Cooper Cup. And mm -hmm. that's what ended up winning the game for L.A. At, down at Tampa Bay. So I would say Cooper Cup was the MVP and should have been the MVP. Yeah, Cooper Cup definitely had a great season this year, triple count, crown winner. But personally... I do not think Cooper Cup is a top five wide receiver in the league. I just think he was fed so, like Stafford targeted him so much this year. And I think next year he's not going to have that type mm -hmm. of season. There, I could list a lot of receivers that I would rather have on my team than Cooper Cup for the next five years. So we saw the Super Bowl's over, 23-20, to 20, and now we head into the off season. And I think the position of interest is, has to be the quarterback. Because we were just talking about Kyler Murray. And he just, Kyler Murray, the whole thing with him is he deleted all his pictures about the Cardinals. He doesn't want to be associated, it seems like. So one of the top quarterbacks in the league might be gone off his team and go somewhere else. You have Deshaun Watson possibly coming back. You have the Aaron Rodgers situation. Does he retire or does he leave Green Bay? And if he leaves Green Bay, someone named Devontae Adams might be leaving with him. Then you have Jameis Winston possibly getting traded away. There's a bunch of rookie quarterbacks that are good prospects that could be really good in the NFL. There's a Jimmy Garoppolo, Derek Carr. There's literally every quarterback seems to not be safe. So let's dig into some of these quarterback situations. So who's a quarterback each of you thinks is definite to move? I would like to say Aaron Rodgers is going to move, but he cares way too much about his image yeah. to leave Green Bay on a bad note. I think if he leaves Green Bay, it will be on mutual terms or he just wants to not look like the bad guy. He's done that his entire career. He's way too worried about his self-image mm -hmm. to you know, burn his bridges, which he seems to do a lot. But I would like to see, I could see him going to the Broncos, but honestly, I think he's staying in Green Bay. Well, I would say if Aaron Rodgers is going anywhere, sorry, Pittsburgh Steelers fans, you're not getting him. Denver would be the wild card to get him, and here's why. 
They hired Nathaniel Hackett, who was a Packers offensive coordinator, as their head coach. What they do next? They hired their tight ends coach from Green Bay as the offensive coordinator. So it's almost like they're trying to lure them in with that fishing stick and that mm -hmm. fishing rod there, luring them in, trying to pull them over to Denver here. I just don't know if it will work or not. Especially if you go to that AFC West, you got Kansas City, you got the LA Chargers, and you got the Las Vegas Raiders. That's a heck of a division to mm -hmm. compete with. I mean, compared to the NFC North, Green Bay is basically an easy win every year. They, nobody else has a chance to beat Green Bay, but if you go to that AFC West, who knows? Tom Brady supposedly is retired. But he's been linked to the San Francisco 49ers, possibly pulling him right out of retirement. His childhood team, yeah. by the way. If that yeah. happens, and Tom Brady somehow just comes right out of retirement, because the whole thing was, I think it was, uh, I forget the reporter who said it was, but he said Brady retired. Brady said, I'm going to retire him on my own words. And then he retires the next day or two days later on Instagram. He announces it. But now he's linked to possibly go to San Francisco, like you said, his childhood team. And they have a guy named Jimmy Garoppolo. And he's been linked to go other places. The Steelers have been linked. Carolina's been another one I've seen. So how does this Tom Brady news shake everything up? I think if Brady were to leave, it would taint his legacy mm -hmm. more than he already did in going to Tampa. Yeah. I think if Brady stayed in New England, he still could have won another championship there. Julian Edelman would have stayed. Gronk would have stayed. It would have been much better. If he goes to a third team, I just think that's kind of like, what Michael Jordan did at the mm -hmm. end of his career. It's just like no one's going to remember him, a 49er. There's really no point. I mean, he has good assets on that team, and like Brandon Ayuk and Debo yeah. Samuel, but I, don't, I think he should just stay retired or join the Patriots for a year yeah. and then retire. I agree he should not do this venture off to San Francisco, but something gives me the feeling that he doesn't want to retire. So, so. There's been rumored to be an argument between Brady and Bruce Arians for not getting along mm -hmm. personally behind the scenes. So he could go off to San Francisco here, and I wouldn't be surprised. Mm -hmm. If you look at that Instagram message he had, six pages long, he never once mentioned the word retire. Yeah. Never once mentioned that word. So to me, he's retired for now, but nothing mm -hmm. to say that he won't come back. Yeah, definitely. So. And you think if Brady comes back to the league after retiring about a month ago almost, you would think Gronk's going to stay in the league and try to follow him to wherever he goes. And if it's San Francisco, there's a situation where Rob Gronkowski, he might not have a good job because they have one of the best tight ends in the league, George Kittle. So is this just a bad move on San Francisco's part to possibly do this? And if you have Brady, you're possibly getting Gronk as well. Or do they say, we don't want any part of this? So say they do get Brady. I don't think Gronk goes there. He knows what he wants to do. And he has said that he want, would like to play with Joe Burrow yeah. in the Cincinnati Bengals. He likes his swagger, I guess. Not sure. But um, I don't think Gronk would go to the 49ers if somehow Brady were to go to the 49ers. I think yeah. Gronk either goes to the Bengals or retires. So we're going to move on to the MLB lockout. Really big news. Basically, the owners and the players do not like each other right now. And it's come to every, everyone's attention. They need to get, have like four weeks of spring training before they can actually have a regular season as the players want that. And that would need to start on March 4th, and that's next week. So does the MLB start on time? No shot. I just, they have come to absolutely no terms together. Mm -hmm. They're not making any ground. We might not even see an MLB season this year. Yeah. I think this might be as bad as 1994 lockout and all the fans are going to be driven away again because these players and owners just cannot get together just to play yeah. baseball. Just to play baseball. Forget about the money. Just go out and mm -hmm. play the game you love for your fans. Yeah, definitely. And we saw they came to a couple agreements that are pretty big. You got the universal DH. They're keeping that forever now. So the National League will now have a designated hitter. No more pitchers who rake comments. No more pitcher home runs. Very sad. And then I think a big one, honestly, is they're going to have a draft lottery, I think, starting in 2023. So basically, no matter how bad you are, you have a chance to not get the first pick in the draft. So we saw the Pirates in the 2020 season. They finished worst record. They got the first pick. If that happens this season, they might end up with like the sixth pick in the draft. So how does that shake everything up competitive balance-wise? You know, as a Pirates fan, I mm -hmm. love it. Gives us reason to not yep. suck as we have <laughs> forever. Mm -hmm. So 
hopefully, you know, it, it sparks something in the, in the Pirates organization and other, you know, bottom tier organizations to, you know, try and start winning again. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe this is good for the Pirates because now they're forced to spend money yep. in some way. Now, if they could just get a salary cap to where you force teams to spend as much money as they can, then we might not be in this mess. But every year you see low payroll for the Pittsburgh Pirates, mm -hmm. and what happens? They lose 100 games or really close to 100 games. Yeah, definitely. And then we saw it looked like there was going to be hope with the lockout ending soon, but then the owners and Manfred came out with the statement saying they do not want minor leaguers to be paid during spring training. And that shook up everything. So was that a bad move to say that public, or should they just kept that inside? I mean, if you're not going to pay minor yeah. leaguers, that makes absolutely yeah. no sense. I, it just baffles me that they would even say they're not going to pay mm -hmm. the minor leaguers who half of the MLB has come up through the minor leagues, yeah. and or at least spent some time in the minor leagues. And mm -hmm. the farm system is so crucial to turn an MLB team into – you know, a World Series contender that I just think it's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. And the minor league baseball players, you could argue, work harder than the major leaguers because they're working to keep their careers alive, basically. And with this, you could possibly be killing the fans of the minor league baseball teams, too. And that's huge for the, this sport, too. Yeah, definitely. And a sport that's done really well lately has been the NBA, as we're going to turn to the All-Star Game and Dunk Contest, which many have said, I know you've wanted to talk about this, it was really sad to watch the Dunk Contest, but Team LeBron wins yet again. LeBron hits the game winner in his home, old home stadium in Cleveland. But let's talk about this Dunk Contest. First of all, I'd like to say the All-Star Game this year was great. Yep. Steph Curry, 45 points. It was a great game to watch this year. The NBA really has stepped up what mm -hmm. the, the All-Star Game used to be. The NFL needs to take a yes. tip from that for the Pro Bowl, but the dunk contest was absolutely embarrassing for the NBA. Mm -hmm. I mean, last year, what, they called up a guy from the G League? Yeah. It was, it's, I cannot even fathom how players are signing up to this dunk contest. They need to start laying down the law and saying, listen, guys, we need stars to do this. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe give an incentive. You win the dunk contest, here's $20 million to a charity. Yep. You know, just from TV ratings alone, they raise way more than that just yeah. from people watching the dunk contest. And that number is going to go down after what we saw last night. I mean, what happened to the creativity? Yeah. You know, Blake Griffin used to jump over cars. Mm -hmm. Now we have Jalen Green wearing an NFT. And uh, I believe it was Cole Anthony who wore Timberlands and dunked. Yeah. Like, half the guys in New York are doing that. Mm -hmm. it, it was just embarrassing. I, I could not stand to watch mm -hmm. it. I believe Kareem Abdul-Jabbar got up and left in the middle of yeah. the show. He left the arena mm -hmm. for the dunk contest. It was horrible. Yeah, one of the things that I missed about the dunk contest, the last good one I thought was the whole Aaron Gordon yeah. versus Zach Levine. That kind of I called it a trilogy. It was like every year almost they faced off against each other. But it was just crazy. Like Aaron Gordon was jumping over the magic mascot on the hoverboard. And now we're, I was talking to my friends earlier and throughout this week. It just has turned into like everyone's just doing 360 dunks yeah. through the legs. It's not really creative anymore. We see that every day. And I saw, I think, Ja Morant was asked to do it maybe. He said no. It's like all the stars don't want to get involved in this. Yes, exactly. you, you could hurt yourself, but then they play in the game, which, yeah. Exactly, and I just think that's a big reason why they need to really, the NBA needs to start figuring out how to make this dunk contest mm -hmm. better. And I think that's what they need to focus on instead of the all-star game these random contests they're doing like the rookies the calves and the i forget who else they did but it, they just need to really mm -hmm. focus on how to make this dunk contest better because that is the sole reason why people watch all-star weekend is for the dunk contest yeah definitely as you said we were spoiled years back with aaron gordon and zach levine but i don't think we're going to be mm -hmm. getting a dunk contest like that anytime soon well thanks for watching everyone we're sadly out of time it was fun talking sports with everyone today and now we are going to transition into our fantasy football punishment, where I'm going to be asking questions to Ian and Joey, our two producers, who were sadly finished last place, and they will be eating hot wings for every wrong answer they get. So thanks for watching and enjoy. Attention. For some reason, the audio file from the microphone was corrupted and we were forced to use the audio from the onboard camera. It was also windy as f Sorry. Frowny face. Hello everybody, and welcome back to The Big Hit. Uh, this is also another very special episode because today we're doing the Fantasy Football Punishment Challenge. 
Um, over the course of the NFL season, the Big Hit and I, we did uh, basically fantasy football and we declared that the losers should do some sort of punishment. We decided on eating hot wings was the punishment and as you can tell, surprise, surprise, Ian and I um, <laughs> lost, actually had the same losing record. No drafts or no trades. I personally Nothing. blame. I personally blame Christian McCaffrey for getting injured again. I blame Jacob Spagnol for drafting my entire roster. <laughs> uh, but today, like I said, we're eating hot wings. We actually have the hot ones, hot sauces right in front of us. We have the very bottom, the classic. Then we have the Los Calientes, which is medium. Then we have the Apollo, which is of course the lab stab, which is the hottest one we can have. Not good. Um, so while we eat these wings, we're also going to be answering questions asked by Nathan here, sports questions. Uh, I believe it is, is um, five main sports, two questions per piece, and we're going to have, I think, three rounds, four questions per round at the beginning of a or if you get a question wrong, you have to take a bite of the wing. Uh, sound good? Yep. So I guess uh, let's get this party started, shall we? Which running back finished the 2021 regular season with exactly 1,200 rushing yards? Your choices are Najee Harris, Dalvin Cook, Joe Mixon, or Antonio Gibson. Exactly 1,200 yards? Yep. Oh, it's so vague. Um, it's not, I don't think it's Najee. He, he grazed 1,000 yards, but I don't think it was 1,200. We're trying to snap it. Um, <laughs> choices were Joe Mixon, Dalvin Cook. with Antonio Gibson. That is incorrect. <laughs> what was the answer? Najee Harris. Seriously? Yeah. I'm, I'm a Steeler fan I got that wrong. Got. He clipped a thousand yards against the rape of the Browns. I didn't think he got more than that. Alright, so well, eating. Well. Alright, well this is we're starting with the lowest one, which is gonna be the classic. So of course. Ramp ramp. Punchman time. It's the lowest one so it's fine. Yes. Okay. Your question is, which country is the NFL going to be hosting its first ever NFL game in next season? France, Germany, Spain, or Italy? I think it's you. I think I might know this actually. I was going to say Mexico. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, uh, I should probably just get this ready. No, you can try. Just Spain. <laughs> Spain. Yeah, it is God. Germany. What city? I haven't announced one yet. Yeah, I knew it was Germany. Which country was Steve Nash born in? South Africa, America, Canada, or Canadian. 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 It's Canadian. That's incorrect. What? <laughs> no! The answer is South Africa. Whoa! South Africa, <laughs> Steve Nash. Oh boy. Alright, let's go. Oh, I gotta eat. Yeah. No, this one's still. This one's still. Yeah. Four questions per wing. Oh, four questions per wing? Yeah, there's nothing there's, else. There's three rounds. There's four questions. Papa John, what are you doing? What year was LeBron James drafted? Oh, I just saw a commercial on this like yesterday. <laughs> Your choices are 2000, 2001, 2002, or 2003. 2003. That is correct. I saw a commercial yesterday about him going to leave. The future is crunk. <laughs> Who was the last pitcher in Major League Baseball history to throw a 10 inning perfect game? Oh, Jesus. Fernando Valenzuela, Roy Holiday, Cole Hamels, or Rich Hill? Say the options again. Fernando Valenzuela, Roy Holiday, Cole Hamels, or Rich Hill? Cole Hamels. That is correct. Roy Holiday. So which one do you? Which one should I go for? The, the go for the baby one. <laughs> <laughs> I just the the, my, the medium one, I guess. From a newborn chickling, I think. That's my question. No, 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 no. Our last MLB question. Who led the entire MLB in RBI in the 2021 season with a total of 121? Jose Abreu, Adam Duvall, Shohei Otani, or Salvador Perez? What year? This past season, 2021. For RBI. I'm going to channel Kyle Scott on this one, the baseball god of big hit. <laughs> Go with D, just because. Salvador Perez? Yeah. That is correct. Oh, wow. <laughs> Kyle Scott, if you're there from the heavens, we miss you. Catchers and pitchers are reporting to spring training. Baseball season has officially started. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. When 
into the Maple Leafs' last win a Stanley Cup. 1947, 1956, 1967, or 60. 1982. 67. That is correct. God damn. Maybe. I know that because I on every single Maple Leaf. <laughs> 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 Our final hockey questions for you, Joey. Sidney Crosby is from which Canadian province? Nova Scotia, Alberta, Quebec, or Ontario? Oh, Jesus. I know. I obviously know who Sidney Crosby is, but I'm not sure exactly which province he's in. Ah, uh, yeah, say this again. Nova Scotia, Alberta, Quebec, or Ontario? I don't know why B's speaking to me, but I'm going with, going with Alberta. That is God, doesn't matter. He's a Canadian. It spoke to me wrong. <laughs> Which American city lost the Olympic bid in the final four for the 2016 Olympics to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil? Your choices are Boston, New York, Chicago, or Dallas. Oh no. Oh no. <sighs> lost in the final four? Yep. This is basketball or is this volleyball? No, this is like the bid to actually host the Olympics. Oh. Yep. Um, city. City. The Lost. Say the cities again. Boston, New York City, Chicago, or Dallas. So only one of them lost. Yes, they got fourth place. Oh, so it's a city that nobody wants to go to. Uh, Chicago. That is actually correct. <laughs> I'm going to be Boston. You want to go to Boston? <laughs> Which American city is hosting the 2028 Summer Olympics? Oh, Los Angeles. That is correct. <laughs> okay. Which American city was the first American city to host the Winter Olympics in 1932? Salt Lake City, Lake Placid, Minneapolis, or Denver? Lake Placid? What is it? I know, uh, oh, really? Yep. Oh, that was, that was, gonna, that was going more on commentary, <laughs> but if you want to give oh, it to me. I thought that was sarcasm. I thought that was you answering. Okay, this is our final question. All right. How many gold medals has snowboarder Sean White won in the half pipe? Your choices are two, three, four, or five. You know, it's weird. Is my mom was just talking about how Sean, this is Sean White's last time in the Olympics, and I refuse to watch it. If only I watched it, maybe I'd know this answer. Um, five. That is incredible. King of the Nar. All right, well, now I'm going to try the last dab. It's supposed to be showing hot, so There are no more questions, right? That's the last question. I'll do it in solidarity. All right, cheers this. <laughs> No, no, this is an internal pain that's gonna have severe <laughs> diuretic impact. <laughs> wow, okay, Jesus, in about 30 minutes. <laughs> that's actually really hot. <laughs> flavor. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's good. You gotta know your Olympics, dude. I don't watch the Olympics. Who watches the Olympics anymore? <laughs> <laughs> My tongue's holding on fire. Obviously me. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well. well. <laughs> bad. It is back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is it bad. goes away and it comes back. <laughs> um... Thank you guys for watching. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Feel free to follow us on Instagram here. Um, and be sure to tune in on IPTV. And we also have a TikTok. Please follow that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, this has been the big hit. Thank you guys for tuning in. And um, I'll see you next week. <laughs> Pain. <sighs> ah. <laughs> <laughs>